prayer. What is prayer? I want to begin with, uh, for me, my favorite definition. And it's one of the oldest definitions and classical definitions of prayer. If you went to an old encyclopedia or some old dusty textbook in a library and looked up what is prayer, one of the definitions you'd find would be this. It simply says prayer is lifting mind and heart to God. Prayer, lifting mind and heart to God. Sounds very simple, but in fact, we rarely do it. And the reason we don't do it is not because we don't want to lift our mind and heart to God. That's a natural, natural impulse inside of us. But because we have an idea that prayer somehow needs to be something sacred, something holy, and oftentimes the feelings we have in our mind and hearts are not sacred or holy to us at all. We feel anger, bitterness, sexual tension, boredom, resentments, and, and somehow we, we can't feel we can pray out of this. And so what happens is we go wherever we pray to our chapels, our churches, our synagogues, and instead of trying to lift what's really inside of ourselves, we tend to try to lift what we think God wants to see inside of us. And so we don't pray our boredom, we don't pray our anger, we don't pray our, our, our vengeful feelings, we don't pray our sexual tension, we try to lift something else to God, and consequently our prayer really isn't coming from inside of us. We're not lifting mind, heart to God. But if we understand this definition, prayer is lifting mind and heart to God, then any feeling, any thought, is an apt opening and entry into prayer. So when we go to pray, if we're bored, we pray boredom. If we're angry, we pray anger. If we're full of sexual tension, we pray sexual tension. And if we're full of praise and joy, we, we pray that. Then we, we give our praise to God in terms of joy and praise. And you see that, for instance, in the classical psalms that Jewish communities and Christian communities have prayed. The psalms are, they're a keyboard with every kind of song in them. So the psalms, they're full of praise. They're also full of murderous feelings. They're full of uh, every kind of uh, emotion, the entire spectrum of the rainbow. I want to give you two little stories that, at least for me, help illustrate that. The first one is a Jewish parable, which I very much like. And they say there was a farmer who was in his field on a Friday afternoon, and he forgot to watch his time closely, and the sun sank, and so he couldn't travel home to celebrate the Seder and the Sabbath with his family. And he was forced to spend the entire day in his field until sundown the next night. So Saturday night when he goes home, he's met by his wife, quite irate, as well as by quite an irate rabbi who scolds him for being so careless. But then the rabbi, rabbi said to the farmer, he said, now, he said, did you at least pray out in the field? You spend this day missing Sabbath, did you at least pray? And the farmer said, well, rabbi, I'm not that bright a man. And all the prayers I knew I was able to say in about five minutes. And so what I did, I spent the rest of the day just reciting the alphabet, thinking to myself, God is intelligent. He can make words out of all those letters. In some sense, it's a beautiful definition of prayer. The alphabet of our lives, the anger, the bitterness, the praise, the joys, we lift them up and we let God make the words of our lives. Even a simpler story, one of my older sisters was, tells the story about one of my young nephews when he was about six years old, and he had just started Catholic school, and he came home from, from school one night, and she was putting him to bed, and she always made him say his prayers before bed, and that night he refused to say his prayers. And so she said to him, what's the matter? Don't you pray anymore? And he said, no, I don't pray. He said, because in school they taught us that we're supposed to, that prayer is talking to God, and tonight I'm tired, and I have nothing to say. See, he got it. He got it. Prayer is really lifting what's there. He was tired. He was lifting his tiredness to God. I want to spend a few minutes now just looking at some of the, if that's the definition, prayer is lifting mind and heart to God, some of the rules for this. And the first rule is quite simply this. If prayer is lifting mind and heart to God, the first rule is there is no wrong way to pray. There isn't any wrong way to say prayers. A friend of mine who works in religious education 
he gets this made on, into a T-shirt, and he gives it to uh, all the students and so on, and you see these young people walking around on retreats, and on the T-shirt simply says, there is no wrong way to pray. Because any feeling, everything we express is, is, is right. It's lifting our mind and our heart to God. Secondly, the second rule, and this comes from all, if you read the saints and classical literature and prayer in all the denominations and religions, they'll always tell you this. The single rule for prayer has nothing to do with how the methodology you know, whether you pray centering prayer or meditation or contemplation or different Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, the central rule for prayer is simply show up. Simply to show up. And I want to give you a little analogy on this. Imagine you had a mother who's retired, living in a senior citizen's home, and you're the dutiful child who visits her every day after work for one hour. So you're visiting her five or six times a week, so over the course of a year, you're visiting her maybe 300 to 320 times. Now, during, and you spend an hour with her. During that time, how many times do you think you would have an interesting conversation with your mother? Probably not that often. Maybe three times in a year. And the other times you're talking about jello and the kids coming home and the weather and is Jack back and is he over his cold? And you're looking at your watch a couple of times. Um, that's wonderful because the deep things in prayer are not that conversation. The deep thing that would happen with you and your mother is what's happening underneath. If you sit down with your mother for 300 hours, something is growing underneath. The words are not so important. And it's exactly the same with God. The key thing with prayer is just go there. If we're bored, sit there. If you need to look at your watch, do it. Therese of Lisieux, the wonderful young Catholic mystic who died in, in 1879, and she used to say, um, is it wrong to fall asleep during prayer? And she said, not at all. And she has this beautiful little quip. She says, a child is equally pleasing to her parents, a little baby, asleep or awake, sometimes even more pleasing asleep. It's the same with our prayer. The key thing with our prayer is just to go there. And don't be afraid to be bored. Don't be afraid that if the feelings you have inside of you don't seem very holy, and they don't seem very pious, or they don't seem very sacred. Prayer isn't about lifting our, only our sacredness to God. It's about lifting everything inside of us that's inside of us up to God, including all of our anger. And as I said, and you see this so clearly in the Psalms, where you have Psalms about bashing people's kids, heads against the stone. Um, that's prayer. And finally, one last thing is about prayer is don't be afraid to experience strong resistance inside of yourself. Rabbi Abraham Heschel, the wonderful Jewish writer, talks about how he said uh, part of prayer, an important part of prayer, and it's strongly in the Jewish scriptures, it's strongly in the Christian scriptures, is simply the wrestling with God, struggling with God, putting up resistance. And Rabbi Heschel says, Ever since Abraham argued with God and wouldn't let him destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, deep spiritual people haven't always easily said to God, thy will be done. Beginning with Abraham and going through Jesus, you have strong examples of people saying to God, thy will be changed. And uh, so be, don't be afraid to wrestle with God. Don't be afraid to struggle with God. Uh, you'll end up losing that, but you will win by losing. And so I leave you with this prayer is, is, is lifting mind and heart to God. And so don't, my, my great challenge is don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to, to actually lift what's inside of you rather than what you think should be inside of you. Amen.